Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Friends, it's time for a little Saturday morning react tunes as we watch Robotech episode 42, Danger Zone. Sounds a lot like Top Gun, but we're done with all the flying. We're down in the muck and mire with the hover tanks of the 15th, my friends. Before we get started, if you could do me a huge favor and hit that like button, smash that subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. It greatly helps out a small channel and it allows me to alert you next time we go live with Robotech. And of course, if there's anything that we do that you would like early or in its full length format, the link to our Patreon is in the description, my friends. But all that is then and this is now, and now it's time to mount up, rejoin our position inside the 15th and follow Dana Sterling's lead as we watch Robotech episode 42, Danger Zone. Prepare to engage maximum warp reaction. And away we go. Fanfare. I don't know what that was. I'm trying not to look at my notes and keep get the 15th down at least. And so we know that we've got Dana. We know that we've got Phillips. We know that we got Bowie. We know that we've got uh, Angelo, and the red the um the the redheaded guy with the glasses. I keep forgetting his name. And several of you have told me this. Um, damn, I have to keep looking. It's like Sky or Eddie or some shit. We also have Nova, we have General Emerson, a lot of really cool people. A lot of people in this one, I'm loving it. Plus we have our mystery ace on the other side, who uh, I have not forgotten. Very curious to see where that, how that plays out. Cause they appear humanoid at the very least. Cool, here we go. An alien force calling themselves the Robotech Masters. The Robotech Masters look as human as you or me. Okay. That explains what I just talked about. Earthlings aren't the kind to take invasions lying down. So the time came to strike back. I like Dana with the narration. Guts, guts aplenty by, by Dana. Love that shot. Always love that shot. Sure enough, we eventually succeeded in setting Bowie free. The question remains. What do we do now? <laughs> I love that shocked sketch look. And now for news from the war front. Love this. Successful in disabling one of the enemy craft, the remainder of the massive invasion armada maintains a steady and ominously silent orbit. Robotech Master Zor, the military commander of the invading fleet, has temporarily ceased hostilities on all fronts. N nobody's really worried about it, though. You get assigned a district like this, and patrol duty doesn't look so bad after all. I thought we were under a curfew, too. And don't do anything I wouldn't, hmm? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll patrol the discos. And I'll start with that bar over there. Yeah, I'll start with the bars. There I am, in animated form. All right, move out! All right. <laughs> Angelo's like, wait, aren't we supposed to doing actual work? Huh? Lady, this is your lucky night. Oh, God. Will you buy it for me, hmm? Well, now, I just might be persuaded. Let's see. Yikes, that's more than I make in a year. $12 million. Thanks anyway, maybe some other time. Sure. I really wanted that Santa Claus coat, though. Maybe I come off too insincere. Maybe. <laughs> or a huge creep. At 0800 today, he attacked our suburban base station in Sector 3. The entire sector with all its inhabitants was destroyed. Wow. Our only viable response is to strike back quickly and with force. Obviously, we must demonstrate to the enemy that we are willing and capable of defending ourselves. Sure. Speaking candidly, sir, we know next to nothing about Zorn. Until we do, I cannot recommend any mission that would risk our men and ships. But tell me what will be gained by sending our pilots to almost certain destruction. I will not stand for this. You are in no position, sir, to question the abilities of our fighting forces. Such bad faith argument. I'm trying to keep them alive. You're questioning their effectiveness. That's such a bad faith argument. I don't want to send our forces in to die. You don't believe in them. Not what I'm saying at all. Fighter crews, we have a green light. We have a green light. These people are all dead. Everyone you see is dead. Eight, seven, six, five. These ships look cool as shit, though. Two, one, lift off. 
Don't get too comfortable with any of these guys. These guys all left steaks uneaten back in the cafeteria. The Robotech fighters thunder down the runway and take off, answering their call to glory. Uh, also known as the call to death. Believe me, Rolf, this was the only way. It was not. It was not the only way. We had another suggestion on the table that you belittled me for. Fire! Everybody enjoy what you're watching here, because this is this is all going to go away in a second. What kind of defense shield, sir? Let's just fly right through it. Ooh, those are pretty good. Fighter 32, get your fighters out of there! That sounded like Rick. Ooh. Boom, 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 boom. Anyone gonna sound the pullback, or are we gonna go down the last fighter? Jeez. Oh my god! Attack wings three, four, and seven report severe losses. All other wings failed to respond, believed to be terminated. How can this be happening to us? Because you're an idiot. Any signs of a counterattack from the enemy? Uh, negative, sir. They're not moving. Why do they have to? Current list of fighters confirmed terminated. Oh my god. On the hasty decision of one stubborn man, hundreds of young lives were lost. Hundreds. Wow, wow, wow. Untouched, unscathed, and apparently unbeatable. Good narration. Really good narration. Professor Miles Cochran and his colleague, Dr. Samson. Miles Cochran? ...of an enemy bioroid in the... Zephram's... ...grandfather? Looking for signs of life, or...? Bioroid? Hovercraft? Some kind of assault ship. Okay, how about the damages received? See if you can get me a readout on that. Yeah, let's look for weaknesses. This is cool, this is... As you can see, internal damage is minimal. Hmm. Well, whatever you do, don't fix it. No mistake, definite traces of biogenetic matter. Wow. Can you extrapolate an image of whatever it was? I thought so. Incredible. Humanoid. We'll have to start rechecking our findings right away. But the, are the blue ones piloted, though? They just have material in them. We triple-checked our analysis, and it always came out the same, sir. So then we're fighting our own kind. Or, no, they're fighting us. You have something for me? Uh, yes, sir. I have the report of our losses. Oh, great. Pilots, 407 dead. Combat ground personnel, 359 dead. Non-combatants, 237 dead. Oh, my God. I tell you, they could have got through if they hadn't have been called off. Angie, I'm telling you, that ship's design renders a frontal assault a complete impossibility. Yeah, Angelo, they're all dead. There must be some weak spot in that ship. I certainly don't know it. It apparently folds space by twisting opposing forces. Space folding, huh? What are you thinking? Come on, Louie. We've got work to do. Huh? Louie, thank you. Louie. I've scanned the entire ship for a central power source. As you can see, there's no sign of one anywhere. But I found a biomagnetic induction network. Nice. It appears to harness the power of these two strong mega forces. <gasps> Through magnetic bonding. I'm going to pretend like I understand that. Trying to explode and implode. And this reaction is the real source of its power? It's like splitting an atom and then putting it back together and splitting it again. Mm, I don't think the chief of staff will choose you for the mission. Not with your track record. Why, a victory? <laughs> I think we're the perfect choice. You're a little effed up in the head? Just crazy enough to do it? I know you resent the fact that your dad asked him to keep an eye on you. But why take that out on us? This is your chance to show those di- Oh, everyone's watching the conversation. Oh, Bowie, Bowie, if I can't go on this mission, I'll never be able to look at myself in the mirror again. <laughs> That's a little over the top, Dana, even for me. <laughs> An hour later, our heroes find themselves in the Ministry of Terrestrial Defense. The MTD. I think I can safely say he's in complete agreement with my findings. Uncle Rolf? I mean, General... <laughs> Uncle Rolf. Well, I mean, you have to do something, sir, and as you said, you've got nobody else. Mm, I see. You think you can do it? Yes. Get us up there. The plan calls for a squadron of fighters to keep the enemy occupied, while the 15th Tactical Corps tries to slip under the defense shields. 
You can't lose too many more fighters here, friends. Stay well without a range of those things. Those are badass looking ships. Just a scratch. Maintain course. They're dropping them off. Payload ready. We did Drop it. them. We made it through. Out of the frying pan. Open landing doors. Go get them, 15th. All right. First, we pierce the hull and expose the biomagnetic network. Then we concentrate our fire and blast this spaceship out of whack. First, we crack the shell. Then we crack the nuts inside. Uh oh. We've got company. Forget the bioroids. We're not after them. Yep. They are a distraction. Do not get distracted. Out of my way. That's right, Dana. You're in a tank. It appears that they have successfully infiltrated the defense shield, sir. They pull this off. Enough with the uh, hesitation and asking for a mission. They get what they want. Ooh. I wasn't expecting that. Who is it? Louis, Babeloid. We lost someone. Woo! That's it. Better luck next time. That's right, Dana. Wreck these pricks. It looks like we found that biomagnetic network. Louis's helmet looks so badass. Watch out! Look at him holding ground for him to get through. I love it. This, I love this fighting. Like, in and out of cover. So cool with the mechs. If we hit the base of the tower with a hypermagnetic particle beam, we'll destabilize the entire system. Just like the Death Star. I mean... Nice. Man, come on, 15th. You are kicking some ass here. Go ahead. We've got you covered. Woo! Suggest you hurry. I'm just finding my range. I love it. There. Splash. Let's get the fuck out of here. Look at them. Woo! Looks like you knew what you were talking about, Louie. Okay, transport one, get us out of here. Time for a promotion for Louie. Mobilize all forces at Zor's landing point at once. Yes, sir. Oh, they're coming down. The great ship sinks like a dying beast onto the cold, hard earth. To be fair, a good landing. A fiery symbol of mankind's first victory in a war for the very survival of Earth. Now, see, I kind of like this because it takes them out of the sky and makes everything a ground. You really should mm -hmm. stop spending your paycheck before it's even yours. <laughs> you party pooper. Listen, Dana can do whatever she wants. What? Huh? huh. That's my outfit. Oh, and I save for months. <laughs> Aren't you a little hmm. young for that dress? Maybe a little hmm? short, too. Hmm. Listen, you two catty bitches. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. I'm, I'm absolutely loving this series. Loving this series. All right, everybody, we just got done watching Robotech, episode 42, Danger Zone. And the only thing left to do is to talk about it. All right, everybody, we just got done watching the 42nd episode of Robotech. And I'm going to tell you what, friends. This... I don't know what it is. I mean, again, there's no apologies anymore because this is a really, really, really good string of episodes that we've seen. Um, what I decided to do was I am obviously a fan. <laughs> I think it's I think at this point it's evident that I'm going to like way more about Southern Cross than I'm not going to like. So what I decided to do was um, assume that I'm really digging everything so I don't I don't bore everybody by saying, oh, I love it. I love it so much. So let's talk about some of the new things that we got in here. And boy, oh boy, we had a lot in here. We had the Supreme Commander making an incredibly dickheadish blunder and getting hundreds of lives wasted because of the stupidity of a frontal assault using the aircraft. But I understand the, me the method to the madness here. 
we send all of our air force, all of our air command up there. They get mostly annihilated with the, you know, we have a couple wings that made it out, but most of them were like heavily damaged, lots of casualties, if not completely eradicated. We had several of them that were like, this entire flight wing didn't report in because they're all dead. So we have the air forces greatly reduced. And then at the end of the episode, we have the Robotech Master HQ coming down it's grounded. I can only assume that's their only ship. Now they might have more. There might be like a whole armada up there. I'm not, I don't know about that, but if that is like their main ship, what that does is it grounds the enemy too. The enemy is now a ground based kind of, they, they aren't coming from the heavens down to the ground. So, you know, while they might still have plenty of aircraft, of course, we know they have the bioroids and the chariots associated with them. At the same time, it brings the entirety or the majority of the fighting closer to the dirt. And when it gets closer to the dirt, whether it be the uh, uh, Robotech Defense Forces not having as much aircraft or the grounding of the Robotech Masters, it means now more time to shine for the 15th. And I think that's awesome. It's a great idea to bring everything closer to the ground, closer to uh, the combat theater or, or, you know, where Dana and her team can be the most effective. And that's good storytelling. It's a good way to explain why that's happening because it's gonna, it would be very impossible or very difficult, I should say. It's ne nothing's impossible when you're, you're, you have a team of great writers, but it would be more difficult to um, have like these continued, like we have to get the 15th up to where they are, you know, and there's a lot of kind of like, oh, okay, they're kind of shoehorning in the hover tanks. So they work here the the assault on the craft and kind of like the ground assault across the like the the surface of the uh robotech master ship that was a cool like one-off you can't keep doing that though because it's like okay they're, they're gonna catch wise to the one transport craft that's coming in it's like okay that's the craft that's holding all the efforts that keep beating us blow it up <laughs> you know so at some point this whole like little you know stratagem is no longer going to work what I like so much about this segment, the Southern Cross master segment of Robotech, is that we have a real, real legitimate emphasis on the team of the 15th. Louis coming in clutch with this kind of breakdown of what he believed to be kind of like the inner network of the Robotech master ship, how it could kind of cascade and fail, and it worked out perfectly. So we had this incredibly necessary contribution from Louis. And at the same time, you know, we're getting to learn more about Bowie. We're getting to learn more about Angelo and Phillips and everybody else. Now, again, uh, and I mentioned it during the reaction, you know, the whole like Dana crying to get Bowie to go talk to Emerson because Emerson was friends with his dad and Emerson is the one that Rolf is the one that was uh, watching Bowie or left kind of in charge of Bowie. Yeah, that's that's over the top. And I mean, but again, those little moments of like Dana acting, you know, like a teenager, you know what I mean? Like a, a younger person. Um, that's completely fine with me. I mean, it's, it, the rest of the show is so good. And I'm not even like that turned off by stuff like that. I just think it's kind of funny that like that that ploy would work. It's very similar to the end when we had the catty comments by Nova and um, Nova and Crystal. Was it Crystal? Crystal Marie Crystal. Yeah. Um, you know, where they're like, that's my dress. You're too short for it. <laughs> like, like those two would take the time of day to like, and again, I think it's hilarious. Um, not hilarious, but I always just kind of like roll my eyes whenever, uh, we see like these fully, like commerce is alive and well in the post-apocalyptic world, you know, because we're supposed to, we're 15 years removed from the utter devastation of the planet, you know, 15 years removed from, you know, the, the destroy, well, actually not 15, right? Because we had a little bit of time there where Chiron was active, but it's been, it's been a bit, but not nearly long enough to, uh, I mean, it, I just think it's funny. It's like people were fighting over a dress a decade and a half after the eradication of most of the planet, you know, awesome, you know, but I, again, these things don't bother me at all as far as like narrative structure or because I know what they're dealing with three different properties, shoehorning them together. I think they're doing a honest to God. I think they're doing a fantastic job with this. I mean, you could easily have, you could easily have F this up pretty bad. You know what I mean? You could have, or you could have just not given too much of a shit and kind of just gotten to the next thing and then just been like, okay, whatever. But that's not what happened. What you, you know, what you end up getting here is um, a very well done thought out, you know, uh, as much as you could possibly plan and prep for this transfer 
we've been given that. And the coolest thing about it too is, you know, they have little throwbacks every once in a while. You know, you have a little bit like basically Bowie, you know, Bowie's talking about his dad and how they were, you know, he was uh, kind of given as a, a guardian to Bowie. Well, we know now that Bowie's dad is Claudia's brother. So Bowie is Claudia's nephew. And so there's a this kind of a throwback. It's not mentioned at that time that, you know, the last name of Grant and all that stuff. But, you know, I, I thought that the best part about this was, and it was my question I was just about ready to ask when they were like, wait, is this human? That looks humanoid. I was like, I was just about ready to say, or a miniaturized Zentradi. And Emerson, I think, is the one that was like, are we sure this isn't a miniaturized Zentradi? I was like, that is the greatest because that's a, a perfectly placed callback to Macross that doesn't like influence the current, you know, structure or story or detract from your players. Like, it's not like you're saying like, boy, oh boy, if Rick Hunter was here, we'd, we, we, we'd win in a heartbeat. You know, none of that shit. We don't have any like, you know, passionate callbacks that kind of detract from our current players. No, 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 just augment, just augment really good stuff. One scene that I really liked and a scene that I think actually does something that we didn't see very much of in the Macross saga, and I'm trying to think if we saw it at all, was the dissection of the Bioroid. That is an incredibly necessary, incredibly important piece of like the combat equation, making sure you understand the enemy's capabilities, things that you can't get from a scan, like looking for weak points, looking for, you know, ways to disrupt, you know, what is this thing made of? How does it tick? These are questions that I had about battle pods and I had about, you know, like Chiron's craft and all these other things. We never really got too many details as far as like, you know, when, when are these ships best used for, you know, what, what are, what are the kind of the, um, what are the capabilities? What are like the, you know, the min maxes of these different things? Like, you know, can the battle pods, if they need to, can they achieve orbit? You know, I had a couple questions like that. And I'm not saying that we got those level of de uh, detail and that level of answers inside this kind of like bioroid you know, autopsy that they were performing. But at the same time, we got a lot of really juicy, good information. And we got a bit of where Robotech could kind of show itself off a little bit, where we had like the readouts and when it had missing a leg. And you could see where they were kind of like 3D by putting back in pieces that were blown off of the bioroid. Really cool shit. So my question with this is, it appears that the blue, while they have like a, an element of kind of bioorganic matter in them, they do not have like full grown humans inside. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. I really wanna know if the blue bioroids are piloted or if they just sort of like contain I don't want to say like cybernetics or like Android elements, but they said they were, I'm not sure if they, it, to me, it sounded like they said there were like trace elements of like bio matter inside there, you know? And they were, I don't know if that means like somebody was working on it and left behind like, you know, skin cells or DNA or something like that, that they were able to kind of test and be like, oh shit, this is human, you know? That's what it sounded like to me. But again, if I'm wrong and there's actual pilots inside the blue ones, just like we know there's a pilot inside the red ace bioroid, but um, I haven't seen any inside the blue yet. So I'd really like to know. I think my my knee jerk is that they are almost fully autonomous. I mean, they're, they, they're capable of independent combat, but um, you know, they're, they're almost wholly inorganic. Just, it's just a fascinating like discovery for me. I, I think that they're doing this so well. I think that they're giving us, you know, developing the characters and developing the war. And the I think that's what I like the most about this. It actually seems like a war. Whereas, but now again, you can say, but I was just kind of joking about everybody kind of going around and like not obeying a curfew and out like partying and shit. I think, again, when I see stuff like that, I it kind of reminds me that, you know, again, they're kind of shoehorning in a property here. And they only have a finite amount of like animated scenes. So some of the shit they're going to have to use and really they can't explain it. They can't explain why people are not like cowering in their homes or in a shelter somewhere and are out kind of, you know, partying. But again, you know, in the face of Armageddon, you know, keeping a sense of normalcy about it too. My long-winded way of saying, I don't think it detracts from the story at all. I think it's kind of, if anything, it's just a note of not comedic, but just kind of like, irony, you know, where you're just like, oh, well, they're, they're going to they're going to party until the very end. You know what I mean? Not party, but like, you know, go about their lives. No one's going to keep them from getting to the mall. 
know? So um, I, I just think it's a really interesting way to do, you know, wartime. And I'll end with this. The idea that they're developing not only the characters and the story, but also the war story is really cool. They've incorporated kind of that, that public address news person, you know, uh, reports just in from the front that we've lost so many, blah, blah, blah. I think that is incredibly awesome. I think that having the, the kind of the insight or the POV with the higher command structure with the Supreme Commander Dickhead and Emerson, very important to be able to see like what they're thinking. And then that matriculates all the way down to the grunt or the dirt level with the 15th. Really, really cool way to do everything. And they're fleshing it out and they're taking their time by strengthening every little kind of facet and every table leg of this story. Ah, oh, friends. I like it. If you could do me a favor, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, and you'll be alerted next time we go live with Robotech or any of our Saturday morning react tunes. And of course, if there's anything that we do that you would like early or in its full length format, the link to the Patreon is in the description, my friends. But all that is then and this is now and now it's time to say goodbye. So where do we say goodbye from? My friends. We say goodbye. We're members of the 15th. We always have been and always will be. We are members of the 15th and we are, after our big victory, we, we are rewarded by being able to go out on patrol again. And friends, we know what sector we have. And so what do we do when we go out on patrol? We scoop up Louie and we head to the nearest bar and we say, buy this guy a drink. He just saved the planet. Friends, until we get to watch our friends save the planet again, Vulcan roll. And I'll see you.